Hey guys, it's 8.55 p.m. on October 13th, 2017, and I have spent a great deal of time digging through the information on these fires because this is unacceptable. These poor people's houses have been reduced to two inches worth of debris, and uh, that's not normal. And as I pointed out before, this seems to be one of the only forest fires in history that burned everything but the forest and burn it earnestly. And uh, I will remind you, if I can find the picture here, that uh, metal and glass have very high burning temperatures. And for some reason, the glass in this vehicle melted. <laughs> glass melts at 2600 degrees, you guys. That is foundry forge furnace type temperatures. The outdoor open air fires at max will get up to 1700 degrees. And yet somehow we've got 2600 to 3000 degrees temperature here. This glass would not have melted otherwise. This is a big problem. We have melted wheels of these cars. Okay, this isn't normal. These, there's temperatures far exceeding what's normal here. And because these poor people literally, these poor people literally cannot do what I'm doing right now, I'm doing it for them. But once they, they chill out, they're gonna be glad I did. Because what I've done is I've gone through every single one of the incident reports for every one of these fires. And I'm gonna share with you my compiled data. This is not gonna be a sexy video. I'm sorry, I don't do sexy videos, but the information here is valid and it's useful. So we're, I'm capturing it now. I have to do it on video by clicking the links to all the wind speed indicators. But here's the problem. Each one of these fires started within a couple of miles, I mean, within a couple of hours of each other, all right? And there weren't any winds high enough to be knocking over power lines. And that's what I, I, my research showed me today. So I'm going to show you how I did this. I went to the incident report for each of the fires. I took down the location. Then I went to Weather Underground and went to the closest personal weather station in the area for October 8th. So for example, in this particular instance, it's October 8th and 9th because the fire started at 12.30 a.m., but I want to look at the wind weather um, that was happening on the 8th, too. So we're going to do both. Now, this is the Redwood Fire, and uh, here we have wind speeds of 12 miles an hour, 28 miles an hour, and a maximum gust speed of 40 miles an hour. We'll look down here at the wind speed indicators, and you'll see that although we had peaks that were up to 28 miles an hour, the, the highest peak gust of wind did happen around midnight, okay? But the sustained winds were only 16 miles an hour. Now, let's go to the 9th. Here, we'll have to do that because this is the one fire... Well, there are two fires, that's two or three fires that started on the 9th, but I, I thought it was relative to, re relevant to get the information for the 8th as well. So now here we have wind speed indicators as the speeds die down as you know, until 7 o'clock in the morning, okay? And we, we do have wind speeds of around, it looks to me like they were around 24 miles an hour. Yeah, 24 miles an hour with gusts up to 36 miles an hour. This is, this is by far one of the fastest wind speeds that I found in all these fires, okay? Now here's one not too far away at Potter Valley. We'll go to Potter Valley here, and you'll see this is this historic information is taken from the Ukiah, California Municipal Airport nearby, and these wind speeds came piping in at four miles an hour, 14 miles an hour maximum wind speed, and gusts at 19. But I want you to look here. The 19 mile an hour gust happened at five o'clock in the evening. The rest of the time, the wind speeds were very, very low. Now, like I said, this fire did start on the 9th, but I thought it was rel relevant to get the information for the 8th. So let's look at the 9th and see what we have here. Again, we've got very, very low wind speeds, two miles an hour and seven miles an hour. And we'll see that the wind speeds were not even registering here. Okay, now, the one thing I do ask is if for any reason, Somebody can explain to me why I may be wrong in the acts in the links I've gotten. This is for Potter Valley. Let me know in the description. I'm certainly not trying to mislead anybody, and I'm not familiar with the geography of California. These are the zip codes that I was able to research for these particular files. But I don't think it's by I don't think it's by any accident that although this information is available to the public, the inf it's it's you have to be you have to be an insider. You have to know you know, where these areas are. These aren't, these aren't cities. You know, Circle Oaks, Boomin Road, Wild Horse Valley Road, 
you ha you actually have to know what city these things are in to do the research I did, and this has not been an easy task. So I really have earnestly done this, in you know, with with all earnestness. Okay, so if I've made a mistake, please let me know. But I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I haven't. I'm confident enough to bring this information to you guys. So now we're going down to the. Uh, this one's in Napa County, Napa, and let's take a peek at what. Okay, so for October 8th, and this fire started at what time? This fire started at 9.52 p.m. So we're going to go down here. We see they were 11 miles an hour, sustained winds, 36 miles an hour were the maximum winds, and 45 miles an hour were the peaks. And those happened right after the fire. 9.45, that fire started. And then the fire, the, the, the temperature, the wind speeds increased and hit their max peaks and stuff after the fire started. This is very important to know. These incident reports can't, can't occur before the fire starts. Okay, so here's, here are the incident reports. And these things are saying, if this is, oh no, this one's at Potter Valley. Let me show you the one here at uh, Partrick. This one, these incident reports start at 9.52. What's, what's insidious about this is this one covers three separate fires. So assuming that all three fires were started by 9.52, you know, I don't think they could include it if it wasn't one that started at that time. Anyway, back to this information. So we see the wind speed were very low, okay? And, and the reason I'm telling you this is because they are, they're definitely going to tell you that, they're, that these, these were power lines that got torn down. And, and people, 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 do you know how bad it must feel to be these guys? It, it must suck so bad that we have to use our brains for these poor people's sake, for the fact that everything they've ever owned is now in a two-inch pile of dust. We have to use our heads and our heads must dictate to us by reason and logic that it is not possible that, that nine at, at the 9 p.m., 10 mile an hour, 16 mile an hour winds could have knocked down power lines because that is what they're going to tell us. I assure you, this narrative about 80 mile an hour winds is baloney. 50 mile an hour winds, total lie. Okay, let's just keep going because I'll just get really upset about this. Um, we're going to go now to Green Valley. Oh, Green Valley. Let me get rid of these. Okay, which is Napa County. We're going to scroll down here and see the wind, the wind speeds were 11, 36, and 45. The gusts of 45 miles an hour. And this fire also started around 945, let's see, yeah, 952. So right here, okay, these higher wind speeds and higher gusts of winds were after the fire started. All right, this is critical to know. These, did, these are not caused by down power lines. All right, where are we? Green Valley, let's go to Oroville. I think that was, we just did those two, didn't we? Okay. Oroville. I've had to redo this video a bunch of times because I keep swearing and I don't want to do that. Okay, 9 miles an hour, 23 miles an hour, and 32 miles an hour. And this fire started, Oroville started at 945. So right here, 945. Okay, this is right when the wind speeds were only like, what, this is, they're under 15 miles an hour. You know, the peak came right before 10 o'clock, the gusts. And that would be consistent with the fact that there's a fire suddenly. Okay, because they had been, there had been gusts all day, but not much. Not much of the gusts. Okay, so let's keep going. We've got Oroville there. Now we're going to go to Ida Clayton. See, these places, I'm not, the names are not familiar. But if you're, like I said, if you're from California and you recognize that if there's any error in my information, please share it with me. Because I, I really, I don't, I'm not from California, so I don't know. To 8 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, 36 miles an hour maximum gust. See right up in here? That's right after the fire started. Let's look and see what time this fire started here. This fire started at 9.45 p.m. Okay, so let's go to the next one here. Let's see, uh, 9.45 p.m. Uh, let's go to the Tubbs fire. Yikes. Okay, that's in Santa Rosa. We're going to look down here at the wind speeds. 12 miles an hour, 28 miles an hour, at 40 miles an hour, maximum gusts. And the Tubbs fire started at 945. So we'll look down here at 945 and we'll see the wind speeds were right under 20 miles an hour. The peaks in the gusts started afterwards. The higher peaks did. Although there were some at 4, 5, 6, and 7. 
almost as if it's on the hour. You guys look at that. It's almost as well. Maybe that's when they register it. Okay, I'm not going to take that into. Okay, that is probably when they register the peak of gust. All right, so forget that part. But but the data is accurate. The data is accurate. Maybe my interpretation isn't right there. Okay, nuns fire. That's these numbers are three thirteen and twenty two. 3, 13, and 22 on the 8th. And look at that, they're very low. This fire started at 9.45 also, 9.45. Yeah, these wind speeds are not fast enough to blow down power lines. Okay, so I, the, I, the, the whole reason I did this was to show you that the, this wind speeds were not fat, high enough to knock down power lines. Not only weren't they high enough to knock down power lines, but you would have had to have knocked down 16 power lines that burned 200,000 acres you see what I'm saying? This is just ridiculous. And I know this is redundant. It's ad nauseum. You guys, I'm serious. I'm sick of this. I'm super, super sick of this. But I know that the people whose house is burned don't have time to do this. So I'm doing it for them. Okay? And nobody has to watch this video. 12 miles an hour, 28 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. <sighs> okay, now we're going to go to Glen Ellen, Nuns Fire. You guys, this was a pain in the neck to find this one. Is this the one I just did? Maybe it is. Well, 3.13.22, here we go. This, I can't remember which ones I've done. Sorry. Okay, 3.13.21. Okay, let's go to Presley. Presley on October 8th has wind speeds of 12, 28, and 40. Same thing, low wind speeds. Low wind speeds, too low to knock down, too low to knock down power lines. All right, let's get to this next one here. This is Cascade. Now, this one was kind of weird. This is, I already did a video on this, but I'm just going to show the information anyway to keep it for posterity because this information is going to be gone in a few days. They don't keep this historic information up and handy. So 92839, look at this. This one's important. This one's really important because all the peak wind speeds of the day came before the fire. I want you to notice this, you guys. Nine, this is all under 10 miles an hour. All of this wind is under 10 miles an hour. And, and I even took a video today outside in my backyard to show you guys what 10 mile an hour winds look like and they're not enough to knock down a power line. I mean, even if the power line was like loose, it wouldn't knock it down at 10 miles an hour. Okay, Cascade, which is at Marysville, 92839, same thing. Maybe I'm doing this over again. I don't know, it all seems to go together. Lobo, 1327.34. 132837. Maybe I got that information wrong. Let's just double check this. Lobo. Oh, okay. Sorry, I read it wrong. 132737. 1327. Maximum wind speed. I don't know where I got 37 from. Oh, well. Here we go. See, all the wind speeds were much lower. Those were during the afternoon that they had high wind speeds. All right, let's, we're done with Lobo. Let's do McCourtney, 5-15-24. 5-15-24 on October 8th. This fire started at 11.49. So this is right at the end of the day. And he has some major spikes here, 11.49, right around here. But still, you guys, still, even if that's maximum gusts, it's still only 24 miles an hour. At The gusts are 24 miles an hour. All right, let's look at Laporte, the Laporte file. This is back at Oroville. Oroville gives us maximum winds of like 20 miles an hour. What does it say here? 23 miles an hour is the maximum wind, and the gust speeds are 32. I'm almost done, Buzz. I'll take you out in just a second, Pupperella. Hold on. Okay, Laporte, and then the table fire. Ugh, okay. We're almost done, you guys. Napa County. Here we go. 11.36.45. And those happen very end of the day. This one's very interesting because the winds did increase for this fire to start. Okay, and now, and you guys, feel free to go through and look at the dew point, the variation in the dew point and stuff. I'm not, I don't have time to do this, okay, because my dog needs to go out, and I've spent literally all day looking up this information. But here's the last one, okay, at the Air Force Base or airport. I don't know what is this. This is an airport. It shows us on the 8th. 10, 22, 26, right here, okay? So 
all right, you guys, that's it. This is the data I have compiled. I hope this is useful, but the biggest point I can make here, and I've made it a hundred times, I'm sure you guys get it. There's no way this fire was started by winds and down power lines.